here for electronic IPC activity. So the idea that you, you measure the instructions and measure the cycle of time, and you kind of see how that's going to change. I'm going to start with something a little bit simpler. Uh, but here's another example he's got of uh, of data format, right? So you just kind of, it's simple. Uh, you have a frame column, and you separate these columns by, via tabs, and R will read that. I'll get more into exactly what that does in a second. Um, so in this case, yeah, we're going to need RStudio, and I'm going to use ggplot2. Uh, we run this command, install packages, dot ggplot2 to apparently install the ggplot package. I haven't used that command myself, but um, yeah. So let's get into it. So this is this is our studio, and our studio basically looks like this, and it lets you. Yeah, R can be used in many different ways. This is one way. Um, but the general idea is we want to start with some data. So here's here's some data Mark sent me from his 885 class, um, and it looks like they benchmark bots. So what you see here is a the, the headers are program, the iteration he did, uh, the thread, the name at a time, a particular version of the program took. Um, so he's done a bunch of experiments with a CAS log, and you can see he's done five, iter five iterations for, for a particular version with one thread, and he's got these different measurements. So you can sort of put your measurements that you make directly into this tab-separated format, and then you can use R to sort of summarize and manipulate and all this stuff. Um, so the easiest, thing is, easiest way to start is just by going with RStudio, import data set from text file, um, Select the data. Our studio will sort of give you then its best guess about how about what it's going to look like. Uh, in this case, it's figured out that it's a uh, tab-separated format and the decimals, period, and stuff like that. So the input at the top shows you these these are tabs and these are the names of the program, and it shows you what you're going to get. So you click import, and it puts that into a, a data object that you can manipulate yourself. But it also gives you the the command to put it in a, into a sort of a bigger script. You um, so this is sort of how you start. Um, and now I'll open up an R script that actually that actually graphs this. So the way Mark set this up is that uh, every sort of line builds on the next, um, but and he sort of executes them in order and talks about them. So at the top we have the line that we got out of um, that we got out of just doing the import, which is the read dot the main, and then you specify the uh, the header. Um, so I, I have a R has a thing where you can execute command line by line. So you see my cursor go down, and that'll be like the next line being executed. Um, so in this case, he's got this one command called ddfly. Um, sorry, I'll stop first. Uh, once you import the data, it's in what's called a data frame. Uh, data frame is a primitive type in R. Uh, and it, there's all these functions that let you manipulate data frames in a really easy way. So in this one, what this one line is going to do is it's going to, so it's going to, function called ddfly is going to take raw data, which is a data frame. Um, it's going to leave the program name and threads alone, and it's going to do something called summarize the time. It's going to, it's going to summarize the other the remaining columns in sort of a specified way. So time will be the mean of the previous time and the standard deviation of the previous time. So I'll run this and kind of show you what you get. So now you get this thing called block data, right? So you've taken raw data and made another another data, uh, data frame called log data. And I'll show you what the what the, how different that is. Uh, can you slide the tabs over? And, uh, um, so here's what we had at the beginning. So we had tabs log in five iterations, and it's all for one thread with various different times, right? About eight, eight, nine, nine, around there. So I guess that's milliseconds. I don't know. Um, and then you with log data, you turn that into one row for CAS lock with one thread, with the average time being 8907 seconds and there being a standard deviation. And he's kind of managed to summarize all of this with just one line in R. I mean, you can do the same thing in something like like SQL. Uh, this, is, this is just sort of the way R does it, right? Um, so to use ggplot, uh, ggplot is kind of, so is everyone kind of okay with where we are right now? In terms of we've got this data frame, and we've got the the data that we've sort of generated from our tests, and we put it in R, and we've run a function over it to kind of summarize it over a couple of different variables. Okay. Um, so now we want to now we want to plot it with uh, ggplot. Uh, ggplot is kind of an interesting thing in that it's 
side. Well, the sky is gone, so there's R has its own built-in plotting. Um, but trust me, you don't want to use it. It's really not great. Um, what what this guy who made ggplot has done is kind of came up with like a like a framework or a grammar for graphs. So there's this idea that graphs have a sort of the way you visualize them and the way you display them. And there's also these things called as aesthetics, which are sort of which are sort of um, derived from the data. Uh, I'll get into sort of what that means in a second. Um, so the way you start with ggplot is you start by saying, well, you, you know, I want to make a plot called ggplot, and it's going to and you, you know, assign it to a variable called p. Um, and the data you want to use is a subset of the lock data frame uh, where the program is equal to catalog. So that means that we're only selecting, so we just got some RSF things for MCS locks, but he's only interested in catalog. So he, he, he had, selects a subset of the data frame called this the subset. Uh, this, this line here is kind of where it's interesting when you say, here are the aesthetics from this data frame that I want you to graph for me. Um, you're saying along the x-axis, I want threads. So the thread's name here corresponds to the thread's name in the, in the data frame we generated, that's called lock data. Um, and the y, we want to do time, right? So the typical, as we increase threads, how does my lock increase, right? We all know this from when we did our, our stuff with uh, locks in assignment two. Uh, but when you actually run this, it doesn't do anything. So you can see that it ran down there. Uh, because it just, it just sort of stuffed this ggplot object into the variable. If you want to actually render the variable, you, if you want to actually render the graph, you print it out. Um, one thing that Mark's doing that I'll just sort of make a little bit more explicit is, once you specify the data, where the data comes from. So you specify the data comes from lock data. Uh, there, the aesthetic along the x-axis is threads. The aesthetic along the y-axis is time. It still doesn't know how to plot it. So then you sort of add to the variable uh, a, a way to display it called G online. So this case, we're just going to get a line plot. Um, when you execute that, again, nothing renders because you're not actually doing it. And then you finally print it out. And we've got a little plot over here that shows that shows what the form is. Sorry about the big window. So I mean, this, so yeah, so there you go. So you see sort of that as you plotted the data, and you see as you increase threads, the amount of time spent in this lock increases. Um, but this isn't like a really good graph, right? Like, like what's wrong with it? Most people get dinged because you don't have you have the points, right? Where are the points on the data? So you want to add something really you want to add something to uh, to that so you can actually see the measurements where the measurements were taken. Um, so just running it again, but this time I just add so I, I have p plus g on line, and now I add p plus now I add a g, g on point, and now you get points in the uh, in the plot. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Um, now let's say so it's good to plot the, the error sometimes in these things, right? So it's really simple. You add this thing called the g on error bar. Uh, with the GM error bar, you want to specify something slightly different. It takes a different set of aesthetics. GM error bar wants to know the top and the bottom of the, everyone's seen error bars, right? It's the, it's the, uh, basically the box where the data goes. You'll see it in a second. And so you specify sort of the hot, the, the top and the bottom of the, the lines. Um, and that's very simple. You sort of say the maximum Y is the time plus the standard deviation, right? Both of these come from the data frame I showed you earlier with the time standard deviation. And the min is the time minus the standard deviation. So when you run that, you get what you expect, which is these, which is these error, error plots along the things. So that's it, essentially, uh, for this one. Um, there's a bunch of other aesthetics you can add. So in this, in this next example, he's got, he's got, he's going to graph everything. So before we were graphing just the cat plot, but now we're going to graph everything. I'll show you what's going to what it's going to look like. So here's all four versions of his of his tabs. And the way he did that was he just said, okay, this my data comes from lock data. I want my aesthetics to be, my aesthetics along the x to be threads, um, the time to be y, and change the color based on the program name. So PROG is the program name from the from the, uh, the data frame, right? The program name is lock and the program name is MCS lock. So ggplot automatically figures out kind of how to split these things up and how to Put it together, yeah. Can you do a 3D graph for GD plot? Uh, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I haven't tried. Um, the GD plot website is kind of great in the sense of uh, all the 
the on the GGPub website, they have these little tiny examples of everything they can do, right? So there's area plots, there's bar plots, there's there's box plots, there's all this stuff. You can you know you sort of like pick what you want and you basically do the same thing that I've been showing you in terms of just add it to the plot. Um, let's see. So the, uh, another thing you might want to do is this is pretty messy. Uh, you might want to split these things up into different different plots, all in the same kind of picture. Um, and to do that is something you use something called facets. So the standard approach now is you make, you call ggplot, and then you add uh, another sort of thing to it. And in this case, we're going to add something called facet graph. And it's going to be based on the program thing. So we're going to get different plots for each program. And I'll show you what that looks like. So in this case, we have the same thing we saw before, but now we've got uh, four different graphs for the four different programs. As well as, as well as the, the same error bars and stuff we had before. So this is how you kind of like build up plots uh, really easily, um, just by continually adding stuff to this thing you've been maintaining. Uh, it's nice to really be able to explore the data you have, as well as making it almost always pretty presentable right away. Um, yeah. So uh, so basically, if you, you know if you were to use a neural program, it would only be about four lines of code to generate this. To, to save them out, you can use uh, RStudio to just save as an image or as a PDF. Uh, saving as a PDF is preferable because it emits all these lines and all these all this stuff as vectors. And so when you put it into another program, the program can properly analyze it to get a nice, like, good quality image in your paper or whatever. Um, I guess hopefully for you, RStudio won't crash when you decide to export your program. So that's the, the general like basics of it. Um, and so now you can go and kind of experiment with our studio and there's tons of stuff online. Like if you just type in ggplot and you get and some question you have about doing a particular plot, there's always gonna be something. Someone's gonna tell you the answer. Uh, lots of stuff on Stack Overflow, on things like that. Like it's really, the support for ggplot is far better than the support for plotting in R, which is kind of great. Um, so I got a fun way. Did you mention what platforms our studio ran on? Everything. Okay. Um, it's all through the same, like the back end is all built in whatever they want. They just kind of stick it into Windows or Mac or Linux or anything. I believe there's even a web version that looks the same. Um, okay, so we did the log example. Um, there's, so it's also got some interesting stuff on from spec. So we run the spec benchmark and it's collected, I think, IBC values. And so those are the same, but there's just tons more data. Yeah, there's three names of data. Probably should be equal to that. <laughs> Seems there's a name here. Um, so the, the, the thing's essentially the same. Right? You write a script and say you load library GG file. You, um, you ask it to read in, read in the data file. Uh, in this case, the data file is the same as similar to the last one. I won't try to import it, but I'll show you the results of importing it. So in this case, he's got sort of a frame, which is like one time slice. He's got the program, the number of data cache entries, the number of data cache accesses, access to three fields, and then the prior reference. Um, so he's going to plot this right away. Oh, something just, something just popped into my head. Uh, apparently doing line plots with error is really hard for you in Excel. And so that might be something, a good reason to use R because it's five lines in R. Uh, so back to this. So in this case, when you first render this function and you can try to plot it out, we're just going to do points of where the X is the number of data cache accesses minus the number of misses. So you can just kind of write a function in here if you want. Um, and the Y is the number of retarding of instructions, right? So you get this kind of like splat about that sort of tells you how many, the, the difference between the access accesses and the misses versus the retarded instruction. Um, but that took a little while to render. You can use uh, uh, the sample function in R to reduce the amount of points you render. Um, so we just called, what we call, we called sample, and we said, you know, spec, and we said, we want 10,000 points. So we sort of reduce, 
the footage still more or less the same. Um, once again, you can uh, change the color. So you take the graph you made before, which we're calling P uh, for the plot. So you set P by U column to G plot. And then you can say, OK, I want to render all the points, but I want to render them such that the color setting is based on the program name. And so now we get kind of a more informal plot. And it, uh, and it automatically gets a like you point. You can control all their aesthetics sort of just by putting in constants. So say we want to set the size of these dots to be smaller, we can do that just by changing the size of one. You can make them really huge if you want. You get the idea. Right? <laughs> uh, you can do alpha alpha values. All of this, all these different aesthetics you can change are are given to you on the ggplot website. So let's so I'll show you one. So for, we're doing points, there's general points, and here's a list of aesthetics you can change. So it requires an x and y, so you have to give it what you want the x data, x values to be, and you give it, give it what you want the y values to be. You can change the shape, you can change the color, you can change the size, the detail. Uh, the shape is caught, it's, it's kind of a, a nice um, thin dog change, right? Because everyone's seen the graphs where they've got the triangles and the pluses and whatever. Um, like, so that's just as simple as going program. Oh, so because there's more more programs and there are sort of discrete values for shapes, it's giving me an error. I'll, I'll do this on something else. But color, there's, there's a lot more options, I suppose. Um, there's an issue with the legends when you set this alpha value. It's kind of a bug, but you can find a solution for it. Uh, in the legends, if you set an alpha channel, the the legend will also, also be transparent, which isn't very useful. So this, the new version of ggplot fixes that, but the new version of ggplot is kind of hard to get. Um, and then there's, for some reason, the ggplot has its own save function, which is you just give it a file name, and you give it a height and, height, height and weight, and inches. So it will actually save that file to your desktop. your paper or your strategic figure, it's nice. Um, so you can get kind of crazy with uh, the way you use uh, plots. So typically bar plots are like, you start at the bottom and you use some uh, number to go up. Uh, we ca we've kind of developed a, a, another way of using bar plots to show how what a thread is doing over at a certain time interval. I'll get into what I mean in a second here. So it's a common activity graph, and I've got kind of an example. Um, so in this case, we've got this data file that wants to load a template. So in this case, we've got this activity activity we've collected, right? So, uh, so we've got threads z zero one two so on, and the function that they're doing at the time, right? The function in this case name is clear particles, and it starts at time one four one, and it goes until time five nine two. For thread one, we've got sort of the same thing. It's running a function called clear particles from time one five three to six seven five. So, so we use the uh, the genome ref function to say, okay, so we want our x to be the number of threads. I'll, just, I'll render it so you can kind of get an idea. So this is this is sort of the, the basic default version. Um, we want your x to be x min to be the number of threads. That's the, the left hand value. Um, the x max to be thread plus a little bit. So we get that nice border there. Get the nice width. Um, the y min is the start of the of the function, and the y max is the end of the function, right? So it's just we just take these these three things we collected before and kind of use them to draw to draw rectangles on the thing. So a simple command with the geom rectangle. Um, we can fill it in a little bit more if we say, you know, fill the change the color of the rectangle we drew based on the value of the of the event or the function name. Right, so we can see it's automatically added a thing. So now we have an idea of what threads are doing over time. Um, threads start at zero, and the time goes up. So you can see at the beginning, threads like some of them run that kind of like orangey command, that clear particles that we were showing earlier, and then they do rebuild grid, and then they sort of wait out for a 
um, you can see like why this is useful because right now you see well, well, why is it so slow in rebuild grid? Well, it's because there's this little guy right here and everyone's waiting for him to finish before they go on to the next stage. Uh, it's kind of a useful, interesting thing to do. And it shows you how you can you make kind of custom graphs in R really easily. Um, so it's kind of weird to read uh, from the bottom up. So it's simple enough to change the scale. You just add scale y reverse to flip to move zero up to the top. And so now along the x, we still have. Sorry that this is so small. So now we've got um, the the y values the zero up here and the x value zero up here. So we've got thread along the bottom, and we've got the time from the start, uh, and then as we go down. From So, oh, and you probably want to set set your labels as well. So it's simple to sort of you say scale y reverse, and you say the name, and you say and then you say scale x continuous, and you set the name and you close, right? So we've got comma along here, close along here, and that was it. And that's really just a few lines that we generated. It's kind of nice, interesting, you can graph very quickly. Um, yeah. Basically, the, the idea here is put your graph in this tab, put your data in this tab separator format, uh, read it in with one line into R, and then call ggplot on it. Um, I'll probably I'll post these examples so you guys can just kind of steal them, put your own data in, and use them. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't know. Are there any, are there any questions? I could go into some more detail about some things. Um, yeah. What's unit five? Oh, unit five is a Oh, it's like a, it's like this class, like 86. Uh, it's like this R R room version. He does more. Um, I haven't I haven't taken it. Arun, no, I haven't taken it. Oh, <laughs> I I have taken yeah. it. Uh, yeah. It's about also parallel programming, multi-core systems, log threads, all kind of stuff. Yeah, he's more kind of like a computer architect, so it's more hardware. Okay. Um, yeah. Anybody's like. as well with the uh, with the way you kind of uh, yeah I mean process pretty much written in yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, yeah there is also new code if you don't want to install R because it's too big uh, just use new code I have a question here uh, after you exported this um, Plot in yeah. PDF. How do you use it, for example, in Word? Is it possible? In Word? <laughs> yeah. I, I, with Word, I would just guess you just drag it in, and Word figures out how to render the PDF and does all that. And then LaTeX. Uh, LaTeX is, is great. Um, I don't know. I use uh, TextMate. TextMate lets you drag PDFs directly into LaTeX and set the, and set the figure. Um, if you're curious about how that's done, I can show you what I did for A2. What is yeah. So. You know, here's my tech file for A2. I'll get back to that. So I'm making scraps that look like this, right? With ggplot as well. It's the same thing. It's I just did some lines and changed the color, and I, in this case, I set the um, I set the different uh, I set the shapes of the different points to be different, um, and then I exported that with uh, with just PDF. Then in LaTeX, it was simple. I, I pretty much when you drag these in, they generate they generate figures for you. And you kind of just manipulate that, right? So what does it say? It says include graphics, height of three inches, path to the, to the plot, what's the caption, what's the figure, line you're done, right? Run your program, run your LaTeX, get a drink while it renders. And then the graphs are in there, right? This one I just put in there and it's Way too big, so you have to kind of change it to be small, but you get the idea that that's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, 
highly recommend using Geekify. If you don't have a favorite, a favorite tool as of yet, just getting R and using Geekify is 